Churches today use many different types of ritual objects to perform certain ceremonies to either worship God or to seek his favor or forgiveness. Rituals in ancient Mesopotamia functioned in much the same way. Laments that were performed by ritual, uh, by way of ritual, lamentational priests served to calm the hearts of the gods uh, during periods of what were considered cosmic instability, so the destruction of the temple for rebuilding or gods being removed from their temples to go on procession, those, those types of things where things were out of the ordinary, uh, they were out of balance. And in these circumstances, the gods could become angry or uh, decide that they weren't going to um, you know, continue to function as normal and leave the city and the lamentation priest was um, was there to speak a lament uh, a type of ritual text that was designed to calm the god down and to uh, ask him to remain and function in his city as he always did so uh, two instruments primarily were used to accompany these lamentational liturgies uh, during the third and second millennium, and these were the balong and the ub drum. Um, when we get into the first millennium, we see that the balong in particular uh, was replaced by the lilisu uh, or the lilis drum. And this is known as the kettle drum. And the kettle drum was very important, and uh, it was it was the primary. Um, instrument that was used to perform these laments. So it was absolutely critical for ritual during uh, first millennium laments, uh, laments. So let's talk a little bit about uh, the drum itself and its maintenance. That sounds really exciting, doesn't it? I promise it'll get, it'll get interesting as we go. So the kettle drum is usually bronze. We have um, a mention of it uh, as early as the old Akkadian period. So, you know, um, latter portion of the third millennium BCE. And uh, the Gala priest or the Kalu, the lamentation priest, used it, uh, as, we've, as we've mentioned, in these uh, lamentational liturgies. Now, it was covered with a hide, hide of a bull. And of course, uh, animal hides don't last forever. And so uh, the kettle drum had to be recovered. Well, it was such a sacred instrument, if you think about uh, rituals in churches today, those objects that are used, the chalice or a, uh, a candle or, you know, the objects that are carried down front, those things are considered to be sacred and they're cared for in a very specific way. Well, the kettle drum was no different. And so when it was recovered, uh, there were uh, certain ritual procedures that had to take place in, in order for it to be covered correctly. So when did they recover them? Well... Uh, when you made a new kettle drum, built one, you know, from, uh, built a brand new one, if you replaced the drum head, uh, a worn out drum head, you had to perform the covering of the kettle drum ritual. Uh, oftentimes it was done at the dedication of a temple. So a new kettle drum, uh, the kettle drum would be uh, recovered for the dedication of a temple. And again, all of these events represent a time of cosmic instability when things weren't as they were supposed to be in the divine realm. And we're going to see as we talk about this in just a minute that uh, the Mesopotamians considered uh, the Lilisu drum, the kettle drum, to be in and of itself divine. And uh, so, of course, uncovering a divine object uh, caused, you know, had the potential to cause a very unstable cosmic situation. So. We have ritual texts from the Neo-Assyrian period, so the middle of the first millennium, uh, and from Hellenistic Uruk, so mid-2nd century BCE, that describe essentially the same ritual. So there was consistency in it. There are some things that differ, but, but on the whole, the ritual remained the same. Uh, so let's, let's talk about what happened in the ritual itself. Remember, if... If the object, the kettle drum itself, was considered divine, then you had to take something that uh, was not divine, a bull, 
and somehow get it to a state where it was divine uh, as the drum head of the kettle drum. So you begin by selecting the bull, and the bull had to be uh, without spot or blemish, if you've heard that phrase before. Um, com the ritual text talks about it's completely black. Uh, the, the, the priest would go through the tufts of uh, the bull's hair to try to find white hairs. I don't know if you can imagine doing that. Uh, I feel like that would be a very dangerous proposition nonetheless. Um, so it was a specific bull. It hadn't been beaten. It hadn't been worked, you know, in certain ways. And there are specific rules for which, uh, you know, which bull could be taken in, in that regard. And then the bull is ritually killed. And uh, the hide is prepared in such a way that it can be divinely transformed. Um, and so there's a specific process for how that happened. So let's talk about it. Once this bull is selected, it's led into the workshop. Uh, the same workshop, by the way, that um, the cultic statues were created in the Beat Mumi. And once inside, you know, you can read through the text, uh, see some of the links below uh, for where you can find these uh, fine translations of these this ritual. But uh, things happened in this ritual that seemed very strange. You know, you bring them into this building. Um, you sprinkle flour around the bull, uh, you're whispering in the bull's ear through a reed, I, I, these long, t long-ish texts. I mean, it's, you would think, I, I, I joked in class when we translated this, I wonder how many priests got killed, you know, holding a reed up to a bull's ear and whispering something in the bull, you know, flicking its head, and anyway, uh, it's very interesting to read. So, but all of this was done to ritually purify the bull to be able to transform him into a divine being and then the hide itself into uh, something that was able to be um, become part of a divine object. So 12 gods, 12 figurines, these little statues were created. At least we think they were statues. There's some debate about that. And if you remember from a video that was put up maybe last week, the Mies P. Uh, the mouthwashing ritual was performed on the bull. And so the bull was then turned, uh, transformed into a given divine status uh, through that ritual. A number of incantations and laments were performed, again, because you're, you've, you're in this liminal state, right? This cosmic disturbance. So, you know, the laments have to be spoken um, to try to keep the gods appeased. Some of the incantations uh, talk about the same sort of thing that happens in the Mies P ritual, uh, where the um, the priest says, I, I didn't do it, right? I didn't make this thing. I didn't slaughter this bull. The gods did it, uh, because this is becoming a divine object. The bull is slaughtered. Its heart is burned. Uh, a sinew is removed from its left thigh, which will be used to, of course, tie the hide down to the kettle drum. Uh, the hide is soaked in flour, water, beer, and wine. Uh, the 12 figurines, something happens with them. Uh, it looks like they may be laid inside of the kettle drum and then covered over. It's possible that they refer to the tightening, the tension rods that would be applied to the side. Um, you know, see the, see the reference below for the debate. But the hide is ultimately put on, and the kettle drum, after 15 days, um, giving it time to sort of cure. Uh, the, high, the kettle drum is brought outside before Shamash, and the Mies P ritual is performed on the kettle drum itself. Other lamentations are recited, again, because this is a liminal transitional phase where this object is becoming divine. And so that Mies P, uh, I'm sorry, the lamentations are performed for just that occasion. We actually have a commentary with a, a drawing, a picture, depicting the bull, depicting uh, the placement of these divine statues, amongst other things, uh, that are that are done, uh, placed during the ritual. So it's, it's really fascinating, actually, what we have. So, in short, uh, or in closing, maybe, the ritual of co covering the kettle drum, an event that itself could cause the gods to become enraged, was necessary to prepare the divine instrument for the lamentation priest to ensure that the gods could be appeased during these times of cosmic imbalance.